Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'm going to be addressing another one of the worst weapon designs in the entire Fallout franchise. Fallout 4 especially has some terrible gun designs, and the combat rifle sure is one of them. Some may say it looks fine, but if you take a closer look, you'll see that it's extremely cursed. Basically, when the developers were designing the combat rifle, they took the rear end of a PPSH, the front end of a BAR, then smashed it together and cut down both the barrel and stock, thus creating this cursed abomination combination. The result looks as if the PPSH and BAR made forbidden love and gave birth in radioactive toxic waste, so the offspring came out littered with mutations and defects. This gun is absolutely loaded with errors, so to keep track of all the mistakes, I'll include a cringe counter in the top right corner, and I challenge you to make it all the way to the end without physically recoiling in disgust. Not only is this weapon an absolute eyesore, it doesn't make sense in the lore either, and there's no reason for it to exist. I'll explain everything wrong with the combat rifle in great detail, and along the way, you may learn some cool gun facts. I'll also be showcasing some amazing, high quality mods made by the community so we can see what Fallout 4's combat rifle should have been. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. At first glance, the combat rifle isn't too bad. Okay, it's pretty bad, but at least it's not like the, uh, you know, the other rifle in the game. That one is truly the worst gun design in all of Fallout, and if you haven't seen my video on it, then you ought to check it out right after this one. Now, the combat rifle is a close runner-up to the most cursed gun in Fallout 4. It looks like a generic World War II era gun, albeit one that a little kid drew in their notebook during history class. And that's because this gun is not a direct replica of any real-life gun, but it does take inspiration from a couple of historical World War II weapons. The stock, trigger guard, receiver, and iron sights are a near one-to-one -one recreation of the Russian PPSH submachine gun, but the front end of the rifle, including the barrel, front grip, and magazine, are more inspired by the American Browning automatic rifle. Both ends meet and mix in the middle. The overall shape of the receiver is that of the PPSH, but the ejection port and charging handle are more like the BAR. Smashing those two guns together is not very creative or aesthetically pleasing, it just looks cursed, and it's a straight up insult to John Browning's legacy. How dare they take such a pristine American firearm and taint it with parts from a filthy combi gun? Like, do you seriously expect me to believe that in the world of Fallout, where the US takes the anti-communist propaganda to the max, that their standard issue combat rifle would be a ripoff of a communist design? Yeah, no chance. If Liberty Prime saw this gun, he would instantly blast it away with his big laser beam because its communism levels are dangerously high. And don't try to tell me that this is some kind of post-war handmade gun. It is most certainly a pre-war American-made firearm. Due to how prevalent it is in the Commonwealth, it must have been mass-produced here in the States. Most likely, this weapon was standard issue for either the US military or the National Guard. Even further, we know it's American-made because it's essentially the rifle version of the combat shotgun. And we know the combat shotgun was used by US troops in the Battle of Anchorage. Of course, I have the same complaint about the combat shotgun. It's even more like the PPSH. I'll have to tear that weapon apart soon, but for now, let's focus on the combat rifle. Fair warning though, it gets even worse from here on out. Now, the funniest part about the combat rifle is that it's not actually a rifle at all. It's chambered in 45 ACP, which is a pistol caliber, and by definition, that means it's actually a sub-machine gun. And before you say it could just be using a 45 caliber rifle round, no, you're wrong. It is most definitely 45 ACP. First, it's used in the other submachine gun, but somehow the base damage of that submachine gun is three times weaker despite using the same ammo. Now that is just pure genius balanced game design right there. But anyway, you can simply look at the texture of the ammo box itself. That sure looks like a picture of a pistol round. And if you still aren't convinced, then just look at the shell casings. Yeah, that is definitely a pistol round. A little detail I noticed though, is that if you look close enough, it's actually labeled as 10mm auto, so uh, that means Bethesda didn't even take the time to give the 45 casing a unique texture. They simply reused the texture from the 10mm. Additionally, this gun deviates from both the BAR and PPSH because instead of being an open bolt design, it's actually a closed bolt. 
but it takes the term closed bolt way too seriously. The bolt never moves when firing, it is completely closed shut at all times. Well, actually, it does move, but only when you reload and use the charging handle. Don't worry though, it just works. The gun still manages to fire and cycle the rounds by phasing through the bolt. Now that's what I like to call certified Bethesda quality. What's even more confusing is that the magazine is obviously designed for rifle length ammunition. If it's chambered for pistol ammunition, then the magazine should be about half as wide. Same goes for the ejection port, it's also meant for rifle ammunition. Now to make this truly convoluted and nonsensical, you can look at the magazine as it's loaded into the gun. Those are definitely rifle rounds in the magazine, yet when you fire the gun, 45 ACP is spit out. So what in the world is going on here? I guess, uh, somehow, those rounds are transformed into 45 when they enter the chamber. Remember what I said about the BAR and PPSH having a baby with birth defects? Well, that's one of the biggest issues. It was obviously intended to be a rifle, but somehow the submachine gun gene from the PVSH took over after the rifle parts from the BAR already formed. I have no clue as to why the developers made this decision. Someone at Bethesda must have accidentally smacked their keyboard when editing the stats for the combat rifle. But knowing Bethesda, it probably was a deliberate design choice. A very boneheaded one, of course. At the very least, you are able to convert it to 308 with your gunsmithing skills. And in that case, this whole debacle I've been ranting about is completely solved. But still, it makes zero sense as to why 45 ACP would be the default caliber for a combat rifle. It should have been 308 from the start. And if there were to be a lower caliber conversion, they could have just used 556. I have beef with some of the other attachments as well. Like this muzzle brake is gigantic. It looks like it belongs on a 50 caliber anti-material rifle. The bayonet is even dumber. There's no lug or clamp or anything to hold the bayonet in place, so it would easily slide off. However, if you use the bayonet with the short barrel, then it'll clip right through the front grip. That is certainly an improvement though. Since the bayonet is embedded in the grip, you can be sure that it won't ever budge. I don't have any issue with the reflex sight, it looks fine, but the sniper scope has a problem. The front part isn't mounted on the rail, the rail is way too short. The recon scope is even worse, it's not mounted on the rail at all, it's simply super glued right onto the receiver. And my goodness, the upgraded stock is absolutely appalling. They tried to make it look modern tactical, but it just looks plain wrong on a traditional rifle stock. With all the wrong attachments, you can truly bubba up this gun, as if it already wasn't cursed enough. I also think it's super lame that you have to upgrade the rifle to get the long barrel and regular stock. In its default configuration, it's all sawn off. Or maybe it was just built like that? I have a hard time believing that this was standard issue pre-war. I really hope it wasn't. I guess everyone in the wasteland who've scavenged these guns are just a bunch of maniacs that live to violate the 1934 NFA. All around, this gun is confusing, both aesthetically and functionally. It's like it's having an identity crisis and it doesn't know what it wants to be. A full-sized rifle like the BAR, or a compact submachine gun like the PPSH. I think that's enough bashing of the combat rifle. I've beat it to the ground at this point. So, by now, you can clearly see that the combat rifle is loaded to the brim with cringe. It's truly one of the most cursed guns in Fallout, and perhaps all of gaming for that matter. I'd be surprised if you survived all that cringe. If you did, then you probably have a thing for it, and if that's the case, go ahead and subscribe for more. But that's enough cringe for now, it's time to cleanse our eyes with some beautiful mods made by the Fallout 4 community. I'm still wondering why Bethesda just didn't go with a BAR in the first place. It's pretty clear that's what they were going for, yet at the same time, they had no clue what they were doing with this design. They just spat out a random, goofy, cartoonish looking gun without much thought. Well, I'll tell you what it should have been. Hear me out guys, how about an actual Browning automatic rifle? You know, the weapon that it's somewhat based on, but also not? Well. Thanks to a modder named Glorious Warrior, we have quite the glorious BAR mod. It adds in a genuine M1918A2 BAR, which is the variant that was used in World War II. The only difference here is that this BAR will be chambered for 308, while the real BAR uses 30-06. That's fine by me though, it's done for simplicity's sake, so you don't need an entirely new ammo type just for one gun. 
Overall, the modder did an outstanding job capturing the BAR in all its beauty. By all means, it's a superb in-game replica, and it perfectly encapsulates the very essence of the BAR itself. Its animations and sounds characterize it as a true, heavy, hard-hitting rifle. All that makes the gun very pleasing to operate. When placing this BAR next to the combat rifle, my goodness, it's not even a contest. This mod beats Bethesda's lame combat rifle in every aspect. It also comes with some customization. Be wary though, you can bubba it up with extended magazines, cut down barrels, some muzzle attachments, and even a bunch of sights, including modern ones. So, I will say, I do think it's a bit odd and cursed that you can attach an ACOG scope and modern muzzle brakes on this gun, but hey, it is completely optional. For me, I like to keep it in its historical configuration. Without a doubt, this mod is astronomically better than what Bethesda managed to muster up. They had no reason to make this knockoff, especially considering that the BAR was present in Fallout New Vegas. It seems that Bethesda simply made this gun out of spite because they're jealous that Obsidian is better. But yeah, this thing has no place in Fallout whatsoever. It would be better suited for Walmart, preferably in the toy aisle. Thankfully though, we have this awesome mod which gives the BAR the respect it deserves. It is certainly the best mod to replace that god-awful combat rifle. But wait a minute, the BAR wouldn't necessarily be the best fit to serve as Fallout 4's combat rifle. I'm talking more about the role of a combat rifle itself now, not the Fallout 4 weapon. More specifically, I should use the actual military term now. Battle Rifle. Battle, combat, I mean, they're synonyms, so it's clear that the Fallout 4 Combat Rifle is meant to fill the role of Battle Rifle. A Battle Rifle can be defined as a semi-automatic or select-fire rifle chambered in a full-length rifle cartridge, such as 7.62x51 or 308. The Fallout 4 Combat Rifle would be classified as a Battle Rifle, assuming that you have it upgraded to use 308 though. I suppose you could classify the BAR as a battle rifle, but most people would say it's a light machine gun or squad automatic weapon. I guess it's a mix of both, because historically it was used in both roles. It's truly a one-of-a-kind unique firearm. But either way, the BAR would not be in service at all by the 2070s, so it doesn't matter. It was phased out of service in the 1950s in favor of the much lighter, more convenient M14, which is a battle rifle. And soon after that, its LMG role was taken over by the M60. Both of those weapons are canon in Fallout, so we can only assume that the BAR falling out of service also happened in the Fallout timeline. The only time we can ever find the BAR is in Fallout New Vegas at the Sierra Madre Casino, so it's pretty rare. I'm guessing the casino bought a bunch of these surplus rifles for their security guards because they were on clearance. It's possible that you'd find more throughout the wasteland, Probably in a museum though, and they wouldn't be all over the place like how prevalent the combat rifle is. So, to properly fill that battle rifle role, we need a gun that was in common use up until the Great War. Hmm, I wonder, what weapon fits that description? It's been right in our faces this whole time. The HK G3, or I should call it the R91, as it's referred to in Fallout 3. My goodness, Bethesda, y'all seriously love to destroy your own lore. Like, come on, they seriously put the R91 as the sign for Arturo's gun shop, and yet he doesn't sell any of them. I mean, come on, that has got to be false advertising. It's also depicted in the Commando perk. It's pretty obvious that this was supposed to be Fallout 4's battle rifle. The R91, as it's called, is based on the HKG-3, which is a battle rifle chambered in 7.62x51. But the R91 from Fallout 3 is actually chambered in 5.56. That's not necessarily an issue, because the G3 does have a variant in 5.56 called the HK-33. However, the R91 does use a magazine that is obviously intended for 7.62, so the devs made a mistake when chambering it in 5.56. I mean, I'm not surprised. That is a common theme in Bethesda games. They just aren't very good with firearms knowledge. I'll have to critique the R91 in a different video, but for now, let's focus on a mod which brings it back, but as a genuine HK G3. 
The HKG3 Battle Rifle mod by Subleader is definitely the best one. All around, this mod is extremely high quality. Dare I say, it's one of the best weapon mods for Fallout 4. The textures are absolutely immaculate. This G3 looks stunning. It's like a work of art. I can't find a single thing to nitpick. It's a perfect replica. Even better, the sounds are crisp and the animations are exceptionally smooth. This modder completely blows Bethesda out of the water when it comes to quality and polish. This G3 also comes with plenty of customization. There's different handguards, stocks, grips, barrels, magazines, muzzles, sights, and scopes. You can keep it as a mid-range battle rifle or suit it for close quarters, or even transform it into an LMG or a DMR. This weapon is truly a very versatile platform, much more so than that lame combat rifle. This mod pretty much covers the G3 platform, all the way from the Cold War era to the modern day. You can keep it classy with wooden furniture and an old receiver, or spice it up with modern tactical attachments. If you think those modern attachments aren't lore friendly, then you are simply wrong. Go play New Vegas. Anyway, this mod is definitely top tier. The quality is leagues above the combat rifle, and it's much better suited to serve as the US military's battle rifle. Well, in the world of Fallout at least. In real life, the G3 was not adopted by the US, but in an alternate timeline, it could have happened. Although the M16 and M4 were already the main service rifles, perhaps they wanted to add a new 308 battle rifle to the mix, one that would be a direct upgrade to the M14. In real life, that role would be filled in the 2000s by the Scar H, but as far as we know, that weapon was never invented in the Fallout timeline, so instead, the G3 could have hopped in. That's basically what Fallout 3 suggests. During the 2070s, the R91 was still one of the main service weapons for the US military and National Guard, and that's why they're all over the place in DC. Adding the R91 to Fallout 3 was a good decision. It's a perfect fit for Fallout's Cold War era themes. But Bethesda then yoinked it out for Fallout 4, and we're just left wondering why. Well, no need to worry about that anymore, for we have this awesome G3 mod, which is way better than what Bethesda could have ever made. So there you go, that's what Fallout 4's combat rifle should have been. First, this goofy combination abomination design should have been scrapped in favor of a genuine BAR, and that BAR should be a rare unique weapon that you can only find in a few locations. As for the role of a battle rifle itself, that should be the HK G3. And to completely delete the combat rifle from the game, you should pick up a replacer mod, either one for the BAR or the G3. I would go with the G3 personally. Of course, you can make your own decision, and I'll link all the mods along with the replacer versions down in the description. It's truly sad that modders always have to come in and clean up Bethesda's mess, so I'm very thankful to all the modders out there that keep Fallout alive. You should show your support too by endorsing their mods in the Nexus. And if you like this video, then go ahead and blast away that like button. If you're a big fan of the content, then please consider supporting the channel via memberships or Patreon. Let me know what you think about the combat rifle in the comments down below. I'm very curious to see what you'll have to say. Also, I'm going to host a poll on my YouTube channel where y'all can vote on the next gun to be torn apart, so make sure to subscribe if you want to keep up to date on all my posts and videos. With all that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video.